the DS3 Crossback e tent is the first EV from DS and we've had it for a month courtesy of Onto and um, well find out whether we've enjoyed it or whether we've thought it's absolutely awful. Off we're going in the DS3 Crossback e tent for the final, I know it, it's a like a joke. stupid name for a stupid car. There we go, that sums it up, doesn't it? Yeah, so um, as you can probably gather, we're not a big fan of this vehicle, but we have to try and be as balanced as we can. So uh, we've had this for the past month, it goes back in a few days. We don't. Too. Mention. With Onto, yes. So we've had this with Onto for a month. They do the short-term leases. I did a video about it. I'll click up there to see that. And uh, Onto have been really good. Um, and this was the only car I think I could get at the time because they were quite busy with their cars. Uh, there were a few others I wanted to try, but anyway, this one's intrigued me because I didn't like it the moment I saw the first pictures of it. But I thought, well, you know, maybe it'll, maybe I'll change my mind once I get in it. And um, I haven't really changed my mind and I still don't like the car at all. But um, let's just talk about it. Okay, rough. so we're off to the vet. Um, again. Again. Uh, one of the last videos we did on the e Nero was at the vet as well. So anyway. Right. This is the only time where you can get me to do a review. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, so firstly, let's talk about the car, how it is to drive. How is it to drive? It's okay, I guess it's not too bad to drive, uh, it's fine, but obviously there are many things that um, are even dangerous in my opinion, so there's the thing that keeps you in line, you know? The lane keep assist. Yes. Yeah. And it is so aggressive and harsh that the other day I almost had an accident because of it because in small country roads again which where we have to go almost every day every day in fact where it's quite narrow and there's lines left and right but not in the middle then it pushes me in the center but it means that if a car is coming uh, the other way, then it pushes me towards the car. And there was a van coming in, and it pushed me so hard that I was gonna almost crash to the front of the van. So this means that I have to keep my hands so strong and hard on the steering wheel that I can't relax for a minute with both my hands because it's so strong it pushes me so strongly to the right that i really have to counteract it to the left with a lot of strength i have to, because it does it also unpredictably sometimes it does it sometimes it doesn't i can't relax in this car so yeah i was wrong it's not fine to drive because, for example, with the Kia Niro, I was relaxing, I had one hand on the steering wheel, the other, whatever, you know, relaxing. Obviously, you know, I know that to drive you have to have both hands on the steering wheel, but I, I could relax in the Niro. With this, unless I'm in a road, uh, standard road like this, with lines in uh, both sides, also in the center, then I can't relax. In a country road, this car is dangerous. But you can turn it off just as you can with the e-Nero, right? Didn't I don't we, know. I will I still have to uh, see. I think I think you found you found a button for it. Yes. Anyway, so then that's another stupid thing. But anyway, okay. maybe another later I can tell about that. Yes, no, I'll tell now because I found this um, this button here hidden uh, right there on the right, and it says off. So I press it there, but then the icon appears on the screen. So it's almost as if it wasn't on, and now I press it and it appears on the screen. So is it on? Is it off? I don't understand this car. Yeah, so in other words, the light shows when it's off. 
when lane keep assist is off, whereas you would think it would be the opposite. Do you want to go right, Danny? Too late. No. Um, yeah, you would think it would be the opposite, you know? It should, if it's on, it should have a light on the, on the dash, as it was with the Nero. And then if you yes. turn it off, then that should remove. But this is like the opposite. So anyway, in other words, lane keep assist, which is our nemesis anyway, and it was in the Nero. And the Nero is very light and it's a gentle nudge. It gives you, it's almost like yes. saying, you might want to go this way, but it wasn't too rough. So in terms of the driving position, is it high enough? It's high enough, but the window is so small that uh, you can barely see anything. The visibility in this car in general is awful because also the design, um, they've added these weird little swooping bits on either side, which make no sense. What are the swooping bits? On the, uh, right here, the passenger and the passengers in the back, they can't see properly because they, yeah, they're swooping yeah, bits. Yeah, because we had some passenger the other day and they can say, why is, they, they said, why is the window so small? There's no reason for it. There's all the plastic. Uh, just so bulky and ugly. It's just pointless. Yeah, I don't know why they had to add that. So that's really bad as well. Yeah. So yeah, there's not there's not a feeling there's not a feeling of being relaxed in this car, is there? I d I don't no, enjoy driving it. No, it also feels so small. Yeah, I mean, you, you, what what does it cost? Forty thousand for this car, for this stupid car. But it feels so small. It feels worse than the Zoe. It's thirty-one thousand five hundred. The lower spec. I think this one, the uh. specification is a bit higher. But but yeah, it's not. It, it feel it feels cramped. The the design of it feels cramped and dark. Um, you're paying a lot of money, and you're not getting very much for it I think this is a problem and DS is supposed to be a premium it's supposed to be Citroen's premium brand I hate it when people say basically but basically this car is uh, not worth the money and the designers and this is PSA group so this is the group that have Peugeot Vauxhall Citroen and DS why are you telling me tell them I don't care <laughs> I think it's all those isn't it anyway they, they're not good they haven't. They haven't made good EVs. The uh, the cars might be okay. In fact, this isn't even an okay car because of all the issues with it. But a, an electric car. It's just car, because we are used to the Nero, though. Well, no, not just that. An electric car, you should be able to find out your battery percentage. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be difficult. Just as you can on a phone. I can find out my phone up there. It says I've got eighty-four percent. Good. So you know exactly. Surely you can find the battery percentage of You can't, this. only when you plug it in. If you plug it into a charge point, it will tell you the battery percentage. Otherwise, it doesn't. Possible that if you connect your phone, then Are perhaps sure it will. Are you sure it's not this? So what, at 0% to 60%? Maybe? Yeah, but that's your battery. Yeah, but it's useless. Why? So, it it okay, looks I'm gonna like tell 75%. Exactly, it looks like, but... You know, when you're dealing with percent, one percent, two percent here and there in a in a, an electric car, that's the difference between making it home and being stranded on the bloody motorway. It's like essential that you have the exact percentage. Okay, our friend has um, a Peugeot E two O E two thousand eight, a really really nice car actually, I think, but it shares the underpinnings with this. She went on a long trip to Cambridge from Canterbury to Cambridge, and. Uh, she wanted some help. I was telling her, okay, go to this charger, go to that charger. She, she's not very good with apps and things like that, so I, I was doing it for her. Hello, Isabel. Yeah, hello, if Isabel. you're watching us. <laughs> I wasn't going to mention her name. Why not? Because yeah, now she's going to be embarrassed. That we're what talking does she about. care? How do people know that it's her? Okay, all right. Anyway, our friend Isabel, she's, she, would, uh, she freely admits she is not very technically, whatever the word is, able. Which is a bit unfair, but she, but you know, she loves her electric car and everything. But I said, what percentage of what battery do you have? And she, and she came back with me with the range. She told me the range, and I said, no, I don't, I don't need that. I need the percentage because if you're trying to work out your your planner on your on your better on a better route planner, you're trying to find out where you can how far you can go. You need the battery percentage, and she couldn't tell me. But so that's useless, isn't it? That's useless. So she can't do it either. No. No. So anyway, it's it's just 
it's terrible. Every electric car should have it. Not with, it's always you with the bloody yawning. I don't do it on purpose. I <laughs> know, it's just when I start talking. Anyway, this is not a good EV and it's barely a good car because of all the issues with it. So, you've got the screen. The screen itself is, is visible, but it's an ugly design. It, it's confusing to use. You've got a labyrinth of menus to yeah. try and find anything. It's not even easy to just press a button for the radio. I know I always go on about the radio, but you know, sometimes I just want the radio. Now, for example, music. Okay. What is this? Apple CarPlay. What, what do I have to do here? I don't know. Anyway, sources. Radio. So, do you think it's as that? Okay. Now they're not going to give you the money. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's normal that I have to press three buttons to get to the radio? But the whole still. point, the whole point of this car is my main my main issue with it is that it's counterintuitive. Everything yes. is the worst interface. The yes. whole thing is badly designed. Yes, from this start to this sums it up, really. What you just said, this sums it up. The review should end here. It's really badly designed. It is. Anything else? Yeah, so badly designed. Everything about it. Every single. Yes. This is my the particular radio. hang up. Because I wrote them down. What I don't like. Oh, so very good. Yeah, so did I. Radio oh. and uh, yeah, and that I, I couldn't uh, find a way to move the mirrors. But then you told me there. But it's also so hidden at the right that uh, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to do do it. And then also, if you close the air. Here on the side, if you close it to the fence, yeah, this uh, the air still comes through, and it does also an annoying whistle. God, it does whistle like crazy, doesn't yes. it? Yes, I know, right? Wee, wee, even though it's turned, if it's closed, so yeah. that's another thing. But uh, what I like about it um, is the cup holders. They have <laughs> this. Uh, you know, yeah, they've got the springy bits. The springy keep bits. Yes. And I also like that it opens itself and closes itself when I approach and when I go away. I think the Nero did that. It's no, just the Nero didn't do that. I'm sure it did when we just had it turned off. Really? Yeah. But actually, that's the thing. So this is funny because that's the thing I hate, actually, and I would turn it off. No, because I love every it. Every time I walk past... Yeah, to go to why the, do every you have I, to walk past every, with your keys? No. Because I've got the keys on me, every time I walk past the car, it opens. And I just keep thinking of the 12 volt battery getting depleted every time it does that. No, I love it. But, okay, but that's I fine. I love it's it. probably an option you can turn off, possibly, although this menu on here is so bad, God knows, because I've been looking through this menu for age, for a month now, trying to sort stuff out, and I haven't been able to. So, it, it's not, it's just awful. What is this that you printed? Yeah, this show, this is, this is from pickanev.com. Um, please visit and it just shows that there you go the DS3 Crossback e tents. do you make money if they visit pick an EV no and allora why do you want them to visit yeah, it because I think it's quite a useful resource but why don't you put ads on it there's an ad right at the bottom but I mean you know I'd probably get five pence a week or something then put a lot of ads no I'm not no I'm not ruining it anyway 31,500 pounds for the start is a starting price for this car you get a Kia e Nero, the bottom Kia e Nero, for 32,445. So. What did you say, 35,000 for this? This is 31,500. I think you just said 35,000. Did I? Yeah. 31,500. 32,445 for the Kia e Nero 64 yeah, kilowatt. Lord, what two. a difference. So. And you just, just, it's just stupid. This car is so stupid. So if this, so this car about 200 mile range, Kia e Nero is easily 282 mile range. They say it's 282 and it actually is because it's efficient. You get a bigger car. It's, a, it's more practical because you know the space in the back is not good. The boot space is not as good in this car. It's faster, it, you know, as I say, better range. This charges faster though. This is a 100 kilowatt charging. The e Nero is 77 kilowatt. So this does charge faster, so that's good. Um, I would say the seats in this are comfortable. 
I think I think it's quite comfortable. Yeah, but with the Nero, you could um, you could uh, what's the lumbar word? support. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You could do the yeah the back that's support true. and that's true. This doesn't you could just tilt it forward, back a lot of uh, push it up, down. With the Nero, you could do everything at least on the driver's side. I, I don't know whether yeah. you could do it on the yes, passenger. that's right. So. Also, the back is so small. The back's tiny. The I haven't seen the um, the boot. Yeah, the boot is. Well, I can tell you what the boot is. But I mean, you know, if we bought this new thirty-one thousand, we bought the leaf uh, for five thousand. Five thousand two hundred uh, something. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> and uh, the leaf is so much better than this. That is ridiculous. The leaf. It's one of the best cars ever. Kia Niro is slightly better, more comfortable, uh, just a bit more uh, luxurious than Leaf. Just a bit though. But Leaf, I paid 5,000 for it and it's so good that it's ridiculous. Because that's the difference, is that we actually enjoy getting in the Leaf. Whereas this, we don't enjoy getting in this car. Yeah. So if I see the two cars on the driveway, the leaf gives me a smile. I look at it and I smile. Yes. With this, I look at it and I think, my God, yeah, because get it's this also off my driveway. ugly from the outside. This. Funnily enough, I think that I don't think it's too bad from the outside. No. As soon as but I saw the guy bringing it in on our driveway, I thought, what the heck is that? No, no. Yeah. I, I wish I'd filmed you saying I that. I told you I wanted a nice car with a nice color, and you got me this. It was all they had. It was all they had. I wanted the Kona. I wanted the Hyundai I wanted Kona. the Kona. Yeah, um, but on to a really good, anyway. Right, the buttons. Here we go. Another thing I hate. The stupid tr diamond buttons. Everywhere it's diamonds. Yeah. It's like some tacky Monte Carlo shit, this car. It's like they've thought, oh, what's classy? Diamonds are classy. So diamonds everywhere. Diamond here, diamond there. But everything, if, if everything's a diamond, then they all look... They all look exactly the same, and there's no, and they're touch sensitive, so they don't even press properly. These ones at the top, so you can't. If you're driving, they all look exactly the same, so you can't tell what you've got to press. You've got to look at the corner of your eye to try and work it out. And yeah, no tactile feedback. All the buttons down the left that do the windows. Don't know why they can't be on the side of the door like every other normal car. They're down here. Yeah. And they all look exactly the same, so good luck picking the right one. Eccola, baby's back. Vai, sbrigati. That's the other thing, this reversing camera. Why doesn't it show anything up there? It kind of does this 360 degree view or whatever they call it. Bird's eye view. That's because it's going back. Yeah, but it should, the front camera should still work. Why doesn't it show anything up there? The handles are so ugly. Look at these buttons. Awful. Ah, and the brake. Ah, the brake, yeah. The brake. Good Lord, the brake. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how many days you have this car, it's very hard to get used to the brake. It's so harsh that uh, really you can be a ballerina, the way you move your foot is still going to be harsh. Yeah. Yes. Again, that's a common complaint, I think, for all these PSA group cars. PSA. Doesn't that stand for a, a weird disease? It should be. There is a head-up display, though. But I, I can't work out how to get it to appear. I think you have to have it. A what? A heads-up display. What does it mean? Yeah, one of the things that pops up up there and it shows you your ah, really? speed and everything. Yeah, but I, I got it to display once, but I think you probably have to go to navigate somewhere. Maybe ah. we'll do it on the way back, maybe. But yeah, my God, these... Let's go to Waitrose so you get me some chocolate. <laughs> Film Waitrose. Yeah, this is the content that everyone wants to subscribe for. And it is the content that everyone wants to see. Because I'm sure they also want to see a bit of normality, not only these boring uh, car reviews. 
Maybe they just want to see a bit of normal life as well. Mm. What is this guy doing? I finito. Baby. Baby. Ben. Hello. Got some he healthy shopping from Waitrose. Oh. What is that? Got profiteroles. Lindo Lim white. Lindo milk. Profiteroles. Ah, another salmon poke. Poke, poke, poke. Oh, good. Well, at least that's healthy. And dark chocolate. Cheese twist and chocolate twist. Good. Don't show this shop to my Italian family because they wouldn't approve no. of the lack of vegetables. And, um, well, I don't approve. <laughs> that's true. You always bother me. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. You know, I was just looking. Look at how small this glove compartment is. What is that thing on the left? A key? Oh, well, the key is for the airbag that, that's turned off at the moment. Ah. Earlier. But look how small. Look, look you, wouldn't, you wouldn't even be able to fit the manual. I don't know where the manual is. You wouldn't even be able to fit that in there. You certainly can't put profiteroles. Okay, but now say something happy, otherwise people will uh, get upset. I know, and also, you know, I'm, I'm always aware that I don't want to upset anyone that's got this car already. Yes, imagine you know. if someone has this car and now they're I know. so upset. I know, but that's just the way, you know. Usually, usually I can find the good in anything, but I'm really struggling with this car. Yeah, if you were looking for an electric car, well, okay, no, if you were looking for a car, then obviously Getting an electric anything is better than getting a fossil fuel equivalent. So there we go. That's damning it with paint with faint praise of the expression, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, maybe people like it. Yeah, maybe of course, we've yes. been spoiled with the Nero and with the Leaf. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. And but with the other one, what was it? Yeah, the, but that's the thing. Every single car. What was it? I three. The I three. The Tesla Model 3, the, um, I drove the Mazda MX-30. The Mazda MX-30 gets a lot of crap from people because the range is so bad. But it feels so premium inside compared to this. It's like luxurious and it drives, it drives nicer than this. You're being nice to Mazda just because they invited you no, to, the, no. to review. Yes. I'm really not. I'm yes. really not. I'm, I'm not at all. That's not even... That's not... No, because I would be honest. No. Because the range of the Mazda is terrible. It's 124 miles or something. So this is obviously much better range and this charge is much faster. So it's not like this is all bad or anything. But DS is supposed to be a premium brand. It's Citroen's premium brand, apparently. But this, nothing about this car feels premium to me. But any, anyone that has this, I'm sure you're enjoying it, this car. <laughs> you know. Also, it's not like I've driven it that much. We had it for a month, but actually we got the uh, we got the leaf. Going back. No, no. Okay, so I'm trying to be uh. I'm trying to be a bit more diplomatic, just in case any of my followers have got the DS. But I just think this is a is a missed opportunity. It costs too much, so it's something like eight thousand pounds more than the fossil fuel equivalent. And I just <laughs> I like it that you call it fossil fuel instead of just petrol. Well, because otherwise, <laughs> otherwise I've got to say petrol or diesel. I don't know what no. powertrain options they've got. Anyway, so if you're, if you, I mean, do people really love DS? That's the thing. I don't know if it's a brand that has much. What does it stand for? DS. Oh God, I should know that, shouldn't I? I don't know if it stands for anything. I can make up a few things probably. Di Di make it up. Well, dipshit is the one that's <laughs> first in my head at the moment. <laughs> yeah. The dipshit three crossback E tent. Also, what do they think of in the name E tent? It makes me tense. Yeah, that's true. Maybe that's what they mean. Yeah. 
You should always feature your dog. I can I drop a bella. Tacky, fake, their vent things. So that's the end of the review. After one month, do we like the car? No. No, we don't. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and press the bell icon and we'll see you very soon. I have to approve, eh? Because I have no makeup. <laughs>